What's up guys, Nick here and you're watching Nick and Katie. About a year ago, we posted a video titled Beginner Mountain Bike Toolbox and you guys loved it. It was actually our most viewed video on YouTube ever. As we've grown as mountain bikers and mountain bike mechanics, we've acquired more tools along the way. So today we're gonna go beyond the beginner level and show you a basic mountain bike toolbox that maybe you'd like to take on vacation with you or maybe take over to a buddy's house to help a brother out. In this video, we're going to show you 10 tools that would be ideal to have in an intermediate basic mountain bike toolbox. Let's get started. The first thing on the list is cable and housing cutters. If you've ever tried to cut cable and housing with needle nose pliers, you may have experienced less than perfect cuts that lead to split ends. The professional cable and housing cutters offered by Park Tool will cut through like butter. While there are other cable and housing cutters on the market for less, you can't beat the quality and feel of Park Tool. Just a heads up, you'll be seeing a lot of blue in this video. I used this tool to replace the ancient cable and housing on my 80s Kuwahara Puma and it worked like a dream. This tool cuts brake and derailleur cable and housing, and even has a built-in feature for crimping and reshaping. Unfortunately, it does not cut hydraulic hoses, for that you'll need the HBT-1 from Park Tool, or a similar hydraulic brake tool. This tool is a must-have, especially if you have a lot of older or less expensive bikes with a lot of cable and housing. Number 2 on the list is a good set of master link pliers. While there are a lot of hacks to remove and replace a master link, the $15 you will pay for this tool will save you a lot of headaches in the long run. Again, I went with Park Tool and this is the MLP-1.2 Master Link Pliers. This tool works on 5 to 12 speed chains that use a master link and is also compatible with Campagnola 13 speed chains. Master links are the way of the future because they can be removed and replaced without driving out a rivet. This tool is very inexpensive compared to how much use you will get out of it and how much frustration you can save. The next tool on the list is this handheld adjustable torque driver, the ADT-1.2 from Park Tool. When I used to work at a bike shop, I was often in charge of assembling new bikes and I can't tell you how many stem bolts I ruined using a basic Allen key. This tool is adjustable to 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, and 6 newton meters has a 1 4th inch hex drive and includes 3, 4, 5 millimeter and T25 bits stored in the handle. This is one of my favorite tools to use because of the sound and feel of the tool when it reaches the torque spec. With more lightweight components being used on bicycles these days, it makes sense to pick up one of these tools to protect them. Number 4. The Injector from Stands Chances are, if you're a mountain biker these days, you're running a tubeless setup and hopefully replacing sealant every few months. Last time I refreshed my sealant, I tried the old open up the tire and pour it in method right before a ride with friends. Long story short, we got it to seal up again, but it took my buddy Chris ripping on my floor pump and me shaking the wheel around like a savage for many attempts. Like the master link pliers, you could probably go without this tool and survive, but do we really want to waste energy and time when this tool only costs about $10? I'd say pony up the cash. Don't forget, you'll need a Valcor remover as well if you want to inject said tire nectar. Number 5. A Bleed Kit Hydraulic brakes are far superior to mechanical brakes as they are more precise and powerful, and that's why they are literally on all high-end mountain bikes these days. Not everyone bleeds their brakes at home, but I recently did it for the first time and it was much easier than I expected. Link to the video in the upper right hand corner if you want to see the bleed kit and the bleed process in greater detail. This kit is great because everything in it can be used for bleeding brakes multiple times. You'll just need to buy more dot fluid and mineral oil depending on what your brakes call for. Conquering the fear of bleeding brakes has given me so much confidence as a bike mechanic and I highly recommend everyone tries it themselves. You'll feel like a rocket scientist. Each kit is unique to your brake system so do some research to see which kit you'll need. Do you bleed your own brakes? Let us know in the comments below. Number 6 is a tool I would not want to be whapped over the head with. Well made and beefy as hell, the TW-6.2 ratcheting click type torque wrench from Park Tool offers a range of 10 to 60 newton meters for this version. They also offer the TW-5.2 as a 2 to 14 newton meter option. I opted for the larger and higher range as I already owned the handheld 4 to 6 newton meter torque driver that I showed you guys a second ago. And so far I haven't needed any other torque specs while working on bikes, not to say that they won't be needed someday. My philosophy with buying tools is buy as needed, and this is one tool I needed for quite some time, and I'm very happy to own one. They can certainly be pricey, but the peace of mind knowing your bike's not going to fall apart on your ride is worth every penny. Number 7 is a chain checker. Park Tool offers the CC-4, which is a drop-in style gauge that measures the wear of your chain. A worn out chain can cause your drive chain to wear out faster, cause poor shifting, and worst case scenario, the chain could break, sending you flying forward. I try to check my chains every month or so, especially when they're older. 
The tool works on any 5 to 12 speed derailleur chain, including SRAM axis, and is designed to accurately indicate when a chain reaches 0.5% and 0.75% wear, the points at which most chain manufacturers recommend replacement. Buying this tool takes the guesswork out of chain replacement and could save you from toasting your whole drive train. Number 8. Measure stuff with this nifty tape measure from Park Tool. The RR-12 measures metric and English readings up to 12 feet long and gosh darn it you'll feel so cool while doing it. Forget standard tape measures that are made for measuring boring 2x4s and refrigerators. This baby is made for bikes and that's why it's on this list. Number 9. A bottom bracket tool. The BBT-9 is used to remove and install external bearing crankset bottom brackets. One end of the BBT-9 engages the 16 notches of the bottom bracket cups. The other end of the tool engages the 8 internal splines of the crank arm adjustment cap on Shimano Holotech 2 systems, which I have never used but hey, free tool. The BBT-9 fits cups and lock rings with 16 external notches and an outside diameter of approximately 44mm. We used this tool to service the bottom bracket on Katie's stump jumper and the tool worked great. Last but certainly not least, actually this might be the most important air quotes tool on this list, my repair stand. Before I bought any of these tools, I bought this repair stand because I knew from just doing beginner maintenance that having the bike upside down or leaning on the wall was just not optimal for working on bikes. I've had my Park Tool PCS-10.2 for a year and a half now and it works great and still looks brand new. I bought this stand because of the specific features offered, but there are loads of stands on the market, so finding one that meets your needs is easy. There is no one tool that gets used more than this, and that's because I use it every time I work on my bike, lube the drivetrain, or just want to stare at my bike at eye level. That's my recommendation of 10 tools you'll need for a basic mountain bike toolbox. Keep in mind, not all this was bought at once, so buy as needed and determine what makes the most sense for you to buy first. Is there anything I missed? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing as it helps our channel bring you more gnarly mountain bike adventures, tips, and builds. I'm Nick and you're watching Nick and Katie. Thanks for watching.